fired 46 guns. <clears throat> so what happened in the English Channel? The Spanish fleet were spotted on the 30th of July so sailing towards the coast of England and the alarm was raised. They were described as huge floating castles approaching. Queen Elizabeth's Navy was ready and waiting in Plymouth. Her Navy managed to get behind the Spanish fleet, giving them an advantage in the southwest wind. The Navy was commanded by Howard and his Vice Admiral Francis Drake. The Spanish formed a crescent-shaped formation in order to prevent the English from penetrating and scattering the fleet. After six days of fighting, bad weather and two losses of Spanish ships, the Spanish managed to anchor off Calais on the 6th of August. They were waiting for the Duke of Parma to bring out his forces on barges in front of the fleet who would protect them from the English ships. He was to make safe the beach of Margate at the mouth of the Thames estuary. This is just an image showing the, um, the Spanish fleet here, the Crescent Formation, and the English fleet coming behind them. And this is off the south coast of England, a painting by Robert Adams. Um, the Duke, however, was not ready um, to, to let his forces go out in front of the, the Armada protecting ships. He knew of the shallow waters off the Flemish coast and how dangerous it would be for the Spanish ships if they were to ground. Um, and to lure the shallow waters and treacherous sandbanks lay, lay and to windward, the English ships uh, with long range guns were anchored, waiting, waiting to pounce. Um, while the Spanish ships were at anchor, Queen Elizabeth ordered her fire ships to be launched and, and um, this <coughs> scared and confused the fleet. Um, <coughs> this is an image showing, I suppose, the panic that might have occurred at the time. Eight blazing vessels packed with combustibles were sent towards the Spanish fleet. They created great panic and, and the Spanish cut themselves off their main anchors and scattered. A change of wind would help the Spanish later off the sand banks, but then Drake, Drake sent in reinforcements and um, fresh ships. And after two days of battling and a great loss of life and damage to his ships and lack of supplies, the Duke of Medina Sidonia could see no option but to flee. After two days, sorry, um, his, no, his armada was no, no longer in a position to flight, and he also didn't have the Duke um, of Parma to support him. And also the ships, um, the English ships had actually run low on ammunition and they also were, were at a disadvantage. So the English ships followed the Spanish up as far as Firth off Scotland and then they broke off. Um, their storerooms and shot lockers were, were empty, so they abandoned their pursuit of following the Spaniards. But they were always afraid of what the Spanish were going to do after this. They didn't know their intentions. There was always that fear there. But they had people on land to spot and, and to bring messages back to, to let the Queen of Elizabeth know what, what was happening, where these ships were going, where they coming to invade some, some other part. Um, <clears throat> So the Duke was sailing into unfamiliar territory. Um, on the 13th of August, he had to employ a French sailor on board one of the ships, 2,000 Ducats, um, to give him sailing directions. He was the only one in, in the fleet who had a, a good, reasonable knowledge of this coastline up north of Scotland and Ireland. And this is the course, <coughs> as you can see, the course that is first to be held is to the north, northeast, until you be found under 61 degrees and a half and then to take great heed lest you fall upon the island of Ireland for fear of the harm they, that may happen to you upon that coast. Then parting from those islands and doubling the Cape, which is uh, Cap Siligra, known then as Cap Siligra, but the bloody foreland of northwest Donegal. Um, at 61 degrees and a half, you shall run west southwest to 50 degrees north, and then south southwest, making it to Cape Finisterre, and go to procure your entrance into the Groin or Ferrol or to any part of the coast of Galicia. So they're quite, um, how would you say, uh, concise um, directions and, you know, anyway. Um, this shows the directed route of, of the Armada, the line, sorry, um, here. This is, here. But this isn't what all of them um, took in the end, obviously uh, 25 plus up to 30 got wrecked off our coast. Um, so they were not able to keep the, to, to the route. Um, they had damaged ships, and I'm going to go into the reasons why they, they struggled, actually, um, after they turned west between the Fair Isle and um, the Orkneys up here. Um, <clears throat> they did have Art de Navigar by Martin Cortes, which were sailing, uh, sailing directions, published in 1551. Um, 
but apart from that and their directions, they, they didn't really know much else about this.